Welcome to Real Physics, the channel about the fundamental laws of nature. I'd like to start this series on great physicists with Niels Bohr, the dominant figure of atomic physics at the beginning of the last century. And of course, this is not a biography with any aspiration to give a complete picture of his life, just a personal assessment of his accomplishments, the things that impressed me most. Bohr was a genius of intuition. He had often the visionary idea everything was built upon. And in retrospect, such ideas may also seem quite easy because the concept behind is very simple. I give you an example. Everyone knows that the number of electric charges in the nucleus, the number of protons, determines the chemical element, right? So the entire system of uh, chemical elements, the periodic table discovered by Mendeleev and Meyer in the 1860s, it just boils down to counting protons. Okay, instead of talking about hydrogen, helium, lithium, and so on, you, you just say one, two, three, four, five protons, and that's it. And this is a tremendous accomplishment. It's one of the most important uh, pieces of mankind's knowledge, right? If you want, it completes the old idea of the philosopher Democritus about uh, matter consisting of elementary building blocks. And uh, someone had to understand it first. It was Niels Bohr. You might say someone else could have discovered it as well. And incidentally, Saudi, a Belgian chemist, got the Nobel Prize for it. But someone had to be the first. And that was Niels Bohr. It's interesting that for such breakthroughs you don't need necessarily much mathematical sophistication and that particularly holds true for the atomic model named after Bohr. Max Planck in 1900 had discovered a very important constant of nature called the quantum of action. And, uh, but it was Einstein who discovered its uh, real significance by uh, finding the famous formula E equals HF for the energy of light quanta. That was revolutionary because it uh, fundamentally changed our understanding of light. Uh, but on top of that, it was Niels Bohr who revolutionized our understanding of atoms by pondering over that strange constant of nature. And again, it's quite simple. You uh, write uh, up the physical units, rearrange them by uh, using the definition of force, and then you eventually realize that this unit, which was originally energy per frequency, turns out to be mass times distance times velocity, which is a well-known quantity, the angular momentum. Okay? And this was the key for developing his model. Also, the mathematician John William Nicholson had expressed the idea, but it was Niels Bohr who first understood that electrons orbiting the nucleus always carry multiples of h bar as angular momentum. And uh, this was huge because for the first time you could see a reason why these electrons were allowed to stay only at a certain distance from the nucleus, okay? And when they jump from a higher orbit to a lower orbit, they would release energy in the form of a, of a light quantum. This had been a mystery for decades, and Bohr's discovery eventually explained the structure of atomic spectra found in 1885 by Johann Jakob Balmer, who analyzed the hydrogen atom and found his famous series formula which is valid for all shells and, and almost all atoms and uh, you can hardly overemphasize this i mean this is the essence of quantum mechanics okay explaining this um, light spectra by first principles by using constants of nature and well you might say that the idea at the very end is simple but few people realize 
what leap of imagination was necessary at the time. Then, to complete Bohr's model, a lot of brilliant and mathematically challenging work had to be done by Heisenberg, Schrödinger and Dirac. And Bohr probably was unable to do that. Sometimes Pauli and Heisenberg uh, mocked Bohr's lack of mathematical capabilities, but without him, they, their own work would not have been possible. Bohr, in turn, defended Heisenberg's most important finding, the uncertainty principle, against the continuing criticisms of Albert Einstein. At the Solvay conference in 1930, Einstein came up with one of his famous Gedanken experiments, seemingly disproving the uncertainty relation by a setup that precisely measured both the energy of an outgoing photon and the remaining mass. And uh, it is said that Bohr had a sleepless night until he came up with his counter-argument and ironically uh, Einstein had forgotten to take into account his own theory of general relativity and so, uh, well, you might say Bohr defeated Einstein at a very important uh, point in the history of physics. It's also interesting to look how physics was practiced back then in this uh, scientific tradition. People were discussing a lot at the personal level and uh, the Legion says that Einstein and Bohr, uh, once uh, absorbed by an argument, uh, forgot to get out of the streetcar and shuttled back and forth uh, through Copenhagen before eventually arriving at their destination. Bohr was notorious for his uh, talking Paul Ehrenfest, the Dutch physicist, complained that uh, at the conference Bohr would knock at one o'clock in the morning at his door for just one word and that one word never finished before three o'clock in the morning. There is another funny story. When Schrödinger visited Bohr in Copenhagen in 1926, he was so overwhelmed by the discussions of Bohr that he fell ill, but that didn't stop Bohr from sitting at the edge of his bed and continuing to talk to him, showing you have to understand the principle of complementarity, complementarity and so on. And uh, Paul Dirac, who was on the other hand famous for not talking at all, he, he said uh, uh, a very, very funny thing. I admire Bohr very much. We had long conversations, long conversations in which Bohr practically did all the talking. There was also, I hate to say it, but Bohr wasn't always clear in his uh, in his phrasing and in his writing, and um, he struggled to to express uh, something properly, but that struggle wasn't always successful. Allegedly, in one of his papers about complementarity. Uh, the pages got mixed up, but uh, neither the editor nor many readers didn't realize because it was so unclear and they didn't notice the change in pagination. Yeah, unfortunately this weakness of Bohr helped to dismiss the Euro European tradition of physics as philosophy and particularly in post-war physics the predominant paradigm change to calculation, testing, observation. That's perfectly fine to test theories, but I think that current physics is missing deep thinkers such as Niels Bohr. And I give you a last example. One big riddle of physics is beta decay. A neutron decays into a proton and an electron and there is some energy missing. We'll have a separate video on that, but in short it was a mystery where had this energy gone? And Wolfgang Pauli in 1930 postulated a new particle called neutrino that would carry along this missing energy. And But to make the long story short, um, physicists today believe that there are electron neutrinos, muon neutrinos, tau neutrinos, oscillations between them and now they're about to postulate the fourth, fifth and sixth generation of neutrinos. From the point of view of natural philosophy, this is a mess that reminds you from the 
epicycles in geocentric astronomy and at Bohr's time everyone would have considered this ridiculous. So I think that physics has gone astray back then and I have some sympathy for an idea of Niels Bohr expressed at a conference in San Remo in 1930 and he said something very controversial. Energy might be violated, okay? We were talking about the energy loss during the beta decay and he said, well, who says that energy is conserved? There was an outcry and uh, the idea wasn't developed any further but I think it's very interesting because if you think about the uh, about the cosmos uh, why do we have all these quantities? We have momentum because we want the laws of nature to be independent of position and physicists invented the concept of energy because we like the uh, constancy of the laws of nature. They shouldn't depend on time, right? But if you look at the cosmos, that's not for sure at all. There could be a slight change in the laws of nature and the constants of nature. and. There are many riddles of physics uh, dating back then in the 1930s which are not solved to this day. And Bohr, in a more general sense, said that for resolving the riddles of the nucleus, probably another revolution like quantum mechanics was necessary. And I think that's a very interesting idea, even if Bohr was not vindicated. I think that uh, Current physics misses deep thinkers, such as Niels Bohr. He didn't give always clear answers, but he was asking the right questions. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to give a like, and if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.